All right, so I was asked to tackle um, a problem that's like number 10 in chapter 10. So to do that, I'm going to do number nine. And number nine is basically looking at distributed learning. So they had people study the material either one day apart. So you study it, you wait a day, you study it. Or one week apart, you study it, you wait a week, you study it. And then to evaluate how well they performed on a measure of their learning. So you're doing a, a test with alpha equals 0.05. Being it doesn't say that we're doing a one-tailed test, we would assume a two-tailed test. And it gives us the following information. So we have two groups. Uh, the one-day group has 20 people in it. And the two-day group also has 20 people in it. So that's a balanced design, same sample size. Uh, then they give us the sample means and APA notation. It's just M. In statistics, we would write that as X bar a lot of times, right? It's a sample mean. So here, the one day gap is 26.4 for their mean, and we get 29.6 for the other group. And then finally, we get the sum of squares is the measure of variability for each group. For the one group is 395. And for the other group, it is 460. Now, if we were going to do this all by hand, the first thing we'd want to do is use these sum of squares to get the pooled variance because we need that in order to do the independent sample t-test. So the pooled variance is where we're going to stick the variance together for these groups, essentially. So we're going to add the sum of squares for the two groups in the numerator, and we're going to divide that by the degrees of freedom for each group, which is n minus 1 for each group, so 19 plus 19. So we would do this to get 395 plus 460 divided by 38, 22.5 for our pooled variance. And then the t-test would be the difference between the means in the numerator. That's their numerator term. And our denominator would be the standard error for the difference between means, which would be the pooled variance term divided by n, right? So n1 is 20 and n2 is also 20. So we're going to do that twice. Pooled variance over n. And so this would be our t calculation right here if we were going to do this the long way. So we would get the T value and look up the P value. Now, I've also given you this calculator that can do this much more effectively. So for example, I could say, okay, well, my sum of squares for group one is 395. My sample size is 20. For group two, it's 460. I also have 20. Notice it tells us the degrees of freedom for each as we thought. And notice it tells us here the pooled variance is 22.5 as we thought. So then we would put in our means for our two samples, 26.4 and 29.6. And here it's going to tell us the difference is 3.2. So if we went back to this, we would get negative 3.2 in this numerator here. And this bottom is the standard error. And actually here it's calculating this out for us here as 1.5. So if you had solved this all correctly for the denominator, right? 22.5 divided by 20 plus 22.5 divided by 20. Square root all of that, you're going to get 1.5. So this is our t-test here. Then you're going to answer that to get t, which comes up in our calculator. t obtained right here is negative 2.13. Now we need to get the p-value still, so we need to tell it it's a two-tailed test with a 0.05 alpha. And now there's our t and p-value that we've obtained. And so we see that this can quickly get all the values that we would get if we followed the process here, doing it long way, you know, solving the math by hand. But this is basically how you would solve an independent samples t-test um, like you see in chapter 10 for a variety of the problems.